have a breaking news bonanza today. The New York Times out this afternoon with an obstruction of justice opus. It's the kind of reporting that reframes how we look at questions about the potential depth and breadth of Donald Trump's conduct. In this instance, obstruction of justice, the New York edition. New reporting in the New York Times making clear that Donald Trump sought to interfere with the investigations out of the Southern District of New York. The Times also out with fresh reporting on the obstruction of justice case into the president, likely being assembled by Robert S. Mueller. But we start with the cases out of New York, which many Trump allies believe represent a grave legal threat to the president. From the Times today, quote, as federal prosecutors in Manhattan gathered evidence late last year about President Trump's role in silencing women with hush payments during the 2016 campaign, campaign, Mr. Trump called Matthew Whitaker, his newly installed AG, with a question. He asked whether Jeff Berman, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York and a Trump ally, could be put in charge of the widening investigation. That's according to several American officials with direct knowledge of the call. The Times also writes this, quote, Mr. Whitaker, who had privately told associates that part of his role at the Justice Department was to, quote, jump on a grenade for the president knew that he could not put Mr. Berman in charge, since Mr. Berman had already recused himself from the investigation. The president would soon sour on Whitaker, as he often does with his aides, and complained about his inability to pull levers at the Justice Department that could make the president's many legal problems go away. The news that President Trump may have tried to interfere with the Cohen probe and other investigations out of the Southern District suggests the obstruction of justice case against Trump is wider than we ever knew and that it extends beyond just Trump's alleged actions against Robert Mueller's investigation. The president today pushing back against this damning new report. Do you ask uh, Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker to change the leadership of the investigation into your former personal attorney, Michael Cohen? No, not at all. I don't know who gave you that. Just more fake news. A lot of, there's, a lot of fake, there's a lot of fake news out there. No, I didn't. A lot of real news out there these days. The new allegations surrounding the Cohen case in New York is just one of several unsettling new revelations exposed in the Times' new bombshell that together help lay out the full scope of obstruction evidence Robert Mueller likely has in front of him. The Times characterizes its reporting this way, quote, an examination by the New York Times reveals the extent of an even more sustained more secretive assault by Mr. Trump on the machinery of federal law enforcement. It's a chilling line in that story when considered in the context of the full-scale character assassination underway at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue this week against the former deputy FBI director. A story we'll also get to this hour. But we start with the new reporting and one of the reporters who wrote that piece, as well as some of our favorite reporters and friends. Harry Lippman was a deputy assistant attorney general and U.S. attorney. Former federal prosecutor Glenn Kirshner joins us. Former assistant U.S. attorney Mimi Roca and Washington Post national political reporter Robert Costa. Let's start with one of the reporters bylined on that story, Mike Schmidt, Washington correspondent from the New York Times, who joins us by phone. Mike, take us through the the, the the piece is so sweeping in nature but let's start with the new reporting on Matt Whitaker and what was desired of him tell take us through it well the president sort of went back to one of his old plays if you remember in March of 2017 when the president was just in office his attorney general Jeff Sessions recused himself from the investigation this drove Trump nuts and he actually tried to get Sessions to unrecuse himself and put back control of the investigation. That failed and ultimately became something that Mueller was looking at and when the president obstructed justice. There was no lesson that appears to have been learned from that. Trump wanted to do the same thing here, raising this idea, saying, could they get Berman back in control of it? Berman, someone who had donated to his campaign and had volunteered for his campaign, and Trump looking for going back to the, the two central things of him. And the, one of the biggest, loyalty, wanting loyalty, obsession with loyalty, a loyal person atop the investigation, someone who would be more loyal to him than anything else. Mike Schmidt, are you, are, we talk about the obstruction of justice investigation into the president in the context of the Mueller probe. Is anyone anywhere looking at, examining, aware of the president's conduct vis-a-vis -vis the SDNY cases? 
we we don't have anything in our story or in our reporting that shows Mueller looking specifically at how the president has interacted with the SDNY investigation. All the stuff has been focused mainly, at least based on what we understand, is on things the president did in office related to Mueller, even before Mueller was there, asking Jim Comey to end the investigation into his national security advisor, Michael Flynn, his firing of Comey, how in the aftermath of that he wanted to get rid of Mueller as well. That is what the focus has been. We do not know that this stuff that we report about today is part of Mueller. So your story is out on what I think is um, the new attorney general's third day um, in his new office. Let's look at how he defines what he would consider the definition of obstruction of justice to be. So in my opinion, if he attempts, if a president attempts to intervene in a matter that he has a stake in to, to, to protect himself, that should first be looked at as a breach of his constitutional duties. So I'm not sure what Donald Trump thought he was getting in Mr. Barr, but it sounds like based on what you describe at the beginning of your article, it would uh, qualify as being consistent with what Barr defines as obstructing an investigation that he, quote, has a stake in to, quote, protect himself. Would you agree with that? I'm not sure about the legalness around this, but there is a theme to this that we see in other things where the president sort of fails to get what he would like done, that the president sort of struggles in his efforts to truly obstruct the investigation. He makes a lot of noise. He says things. People will not carry out his orders. And ultimately, he moves on to something else and sours on the person. It's the same exact thing that happens with Jim Comey, almost nearly to the day, February of 2017, asking Comey to end the investigation into Flynn. Comey not doing that, writing about it in a memo. And then when that comes out, Mueller being appointed, the theme here in the reporting is that the president has done a lot of things, but not necessarily been successful at many times his own worst enemy, not very adept at getting the system to do, at least based on what we know, what he wants. Your, your piece makes a point in, in the very beginning about um, the numbing effect of Donald Trump's constant efforts at um, trying to obstruct or intervene in these investigations, um, and then goes on to sort of describe those efforts as um, brazen by, by one of his lawyers, that, that it can't be criminal, we do it in public. Can you just remind us of all the flashpoints, um, whether it's the effort to fire Robert Mueller or to get Sessions to unrecuse, which you mentioned at the beginning, what is the body of, of conduct from Donald Trump under investigation in the wider obstruction of justice probe? Well, it's, it's everything. It's everything related to, to Comey, to Russia. But as you point out, there's an interesting sort of wrinkle to it that a lot of these things may have happened in public. They may have been things he may have been trying to pressure Sessions publicly through statements, through tweets, saying things like, I never would have made Jeff Sessions my attorney general if I knew he was going to recuse himself and sort of mixing that with other things behind the scenes to try and get Sessions out or get Sessions to fire Mueller, sort of the intertwined nature of them. The piece that we have here today is something he said to the acting attorney general in private, but he has also gone after the investigation in public, and he has tried to demonize the investigators in public, and he has gone after witnesses in public. So the, sometimes we spend a lot of time trying to figure out something the president did behind the scenes, only to find out that he said it publicly. And many times he hasn't hidden his feelings about the investigation and done a very good job at sort of moving public opinion, at least making it confusing for the average American because they hear so many different things about this to actually understand what he has done or not done. Harry Lippman, I'm not a lawyer, but is that a defense? I murdered someone in broad daylight while everybody was looking? I think you know the answer to that one. <laughs> it, 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 it sure, you can certainly obstruct justice and do it in plain view, in plain sight. And for the president of the United States, in fact, that's often the opportunities that you have when you make these kind, you, when you can use your bully pulpit in a way to actually influence investigations and get the word out. But what I think was so striking about what Robert had to say and the report itself was the panorama of it. 
in, uh, prosecutors investigate episodes, and there are many episodes of possible obstruction here. But when you take a step back and look at this long article, what you see is a theme, almost like a continuing criminal enterprise where the obstruction is just second nature to him, the demonization, the anything goes kind of uh, lies about the antagonists and the prosecutors. When it's all added up, it seems it's more than the sum of its parts. Robert Costa, I want to play for you something that I heard right when um, uh, Mike and his colleague's story broke. I flipped over to Fox News to see, one, if it was being covered, and um, to, to Shep Smith, a great, great journalist over there, his credit, of course it was. He had on Judge Napolitano, and their analysis was damning. I want to show this to you and ask you how you think this is playing in the West Wing. President Trump, if the New York Times is correct, wanted his ally to be in charge of both of those investigations. And Matt Whitaker, to his credit, apparently, did not execute that command. But that, that, that phone call, you said that's evident of corrupt intent. On the part of the president, because he's making a... a Would that be obstruction? Yes. It, well, it would be att attempted obstruction. It would only be obstruction if it succeeded. But if you try to interfere with a criminal prosecution that may mm -hmm. knock at your own door by putting your ally in there, that is clearly attempt, an attempt to obstruct justice. Robert Costa, I know they don't care what we say here on this network, but they care very, very much. And most of them will admit it privately, what happens on that network. Not a good omen for this president. What the judge over there on Fox said is what Republicans now are, are facing at, on Capitol Hill. They see the legal storm clouds over this president about his conduct. They know that Paul Manafort and General Flynn and others may have their own issues with Russian interference in the 2016 campaign. But now the president, who has the Republican Party in his grip, is facing mounting questions of obstruction or alleged obstruction of justice, as outlined in the New York Times, terrific story by Mike Schmidt and others, and through other incidents, incidences over the past couple of years. And that's the, the critical issue right now for those on the conservative side. You may not believe in Russian interference was a big issue, it was something unrelated to the president, but the president's conduct, that is something in the spotlight, and that will likely be detailed by Robert Mueller at some level. Dozens of instances of whether you call it obstruction or not, of behavior that Congress will have to scrutinize. Mimi Rohoka, I always like to go back when something on the, the obstruction side, when there's a new development, and see the president in his own words reacting in a way that I don't think we've seen in his entire presidency. The way he reacted, the things he said the day of the Cohen raid. And, and, and I'm going to play this because all of his closest allies say it is the Cohen raid and the cases that stemmed from Cohen flipping and Cohen now having nothing to lose. He's on his way to prison that gives the president the most uh, fear on the legal front. Let, let's watch that reaction from many months ago. It's a disgrace. It's frankly a real disgrace. It's a, an attack on our country in a true sense. It's an attack on what we all stand for. This was a raid on the homes and offices of Michael Cohen, who, with all due respect, was the president's fixer. He paid money to women he had alleged sexual relationships with. It was a lot of things. It was not an attack on our nation. Mimi. Exactly. Nicole, when I was reading the article today, I thought of that day also of when Trump was so incensed about the raid on Michael. Well, I, I hate to call it a raid. The lawfully executed search warrant on Michael Cohen's office. And it's so clear. It was clear that day, but it's even more clear now in retrospect, given what Michael Cohen has come out and said under oath about the president, that he was saying those things, Trump, out of fear. He was afraid of what was going to come out of this investigation. And we know that the Southern District did not end its investigation when Michael Cohen, Cohen pled guilty. There have now been frequent several statements um, in court documents and by the Southern District that they have an ongoing investigation. And that, to me, is what is so dangerous and striking about this uh, attempted obstruction by Trump. The firing of Comey, the asking to let the investigation go into Flynn, I personally think, uh, like many other uh, legal experts, that that 
could and should constitute obstruction. But there are arguable defenses that Trump could raise, and he could say he was helping a friend or he was trying to end an investigation that was politically motivated and it didn't center on him at the time of the firing. He cannot say those things about the Southern District of New York. There is no question that he has known from day one, and it has become more and more evident, including Cohen's statement under oath, that the Southern District of New York's investigation centers on Trump's family, Trump's business, and likely Trump himself, whether or not he can be indicted. And so it is just the clearest form of obstruction, I think, that we've seen. And, uh, you know, I think that the Southern District and, frankly, Berman, who uh, Trump sees, I, I guess, as, a, as an ally, but Berman did the right thing by recusing himself and leaving this investigation in the hands of career prosecutors. Mike Schmidt, I, wa I want to ask you about, about some of your Whitaker reporting in here, but are we looking at this today too narrowly? Was Trump just concerned about the Cohen case and the hush money case, or, or was he worried about the broader scope and the broader mandate of the Southern District of New York? It's unclear. I think with Trump, it always comes back to one simple question, which is his finances. Since July of 2017, he has said that his finances, his money, would be a red line, which would be for Mueller. He was talking about at the time saying that if Mueller looks at his finances, that would be going too far. I can't imagine that if the Southern District of New York is looking at his finances, he would be okay with that. So he's always been very sensitive on that issue, on his money, including on the campaign trail, where he wouldn't release his own taxes. So here you have the Justice Department has crossed that red line. The president, you know, has tried to do different things to sort of rein it in. And if there is anything that is most focused on its money, it is the investigations out of the Southern District. It's not. We have no indication on the Mueller side that Mueller has looked at the money. But on, on the payments to the women and on, on the Trump organization, it is his money. Chuck Rosenberg says Mueller has his taxes, but we'll save that for another day. I want to ask you about this reporting about uh, acting Attorney General Matt Whitaker. You guys write, Mr. Whitaker, who earlier this month told a congressional committee that Mr. Trump had never pressured him over the various investigations, is now under scrutiny by House Democrats for possible perjury. Is anyone in the Justice Department looking at his testimony, or is this, is this still the Democrats in their oversight role over a Republican-led Justice Department? I'm sure like any official who goes up to Capitol Hill and testifies, the Justice Department will go back and look at it. I don't know anything beyond that that would be there. I can imagine this will be an issue that the Democrats will continue to bring up time and time again to try and get Whitaker to try and pin him down. You sort of see the the problems at times with allowing members of Congress to ask someone a question. There are different ways that Whitaker provided different answers that don't necessarily provide complete clarity to what went on. Perhaps in follow-up questions from the committees up there, Whitaker will explain that actually everything that went on here because a reading of the transcript is, is not entirely clear about what the conversations with the president were and when they may have happened. Glenn Kirshner, it's a, it's a good point, and, and congressional committees do give witnesses an opportunity to clean up sometimes something they said. L let me just put up one of the statements that, that he might need to clean up, and we'll talk about it. At no time has the White House asked for, nor have I provided, any promises or commitments concerning the special counsel's investigation or any other investigation. And Kirshner, you think that's something he's going to want to um, uh, maybe say, oh, I remembered something, come to think of it. Yeah, Nicole, plus one point to Matthew Whitaker for telling President Trump that Jeff Berman cannot supervise the Southern District of New York investigation, but minus two points for giving what sure seems to be misleading answers on that very topic, whether the president ever pressured him, approached him, tried to get him to do something with respect to the Southern District of New York investigation. So I think ultimately Matthew Whitaker may have gone from the least qualified acting attorney general in the history of our country <laughs> to potentially a subject or a target of a false statements investigation for what seems to be 
misleading testimony to Congress. It's it's amazing. It does it does sort of prove out Robert Costa this this tenet that even people close to Donald Trump will say that everyone that becomes entangled, whether it's Manafort who'd done years of ethically questionable uh, business for for years, gets gets caught and prosecuted and sentenced when he goes to work for Donald Trump. All of these figures come in contact with Donald Trump, and it seems that. Um, they get scrutinized in, in a new way. you have any thoughts or any reporting about Matt Whitaker's future, Robert Costa? Matthew Whitaker was a commentator before he joined the Justice Department. His friends tell me he would like to become a conservative commentator once again, though at the moment he's still lingering around the Department of Justice. What we're seeing with this Whitaker exchange, with the Corey Lewandowski exchange with the president, in the New York Times story is a White House that wanted to keep the Russia investigation separate, bringing in Emmett Flood, having Rudy Giuliani and other lawyers on the outside, has always found the waters to be muddy over the past two years. A White House has struggled across the board to make sure that the Russia investigation remains separate. The president, time and again, keeps it interacting with different officials, associates, bringing the Russia investigation back into the West Wing in different respects. That's complicated his own presidency, to say the least. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.